We are class 10. Uh, we'll continue chapter number 10 that is uh, the nervous system. So in the last session we had a talk about uh, the structure and functional unit of nervous system that is the neuron. Okay. And uh, today we'll see the brain. Okay. Human brain. Human brain. Alright. So before going into the human brain, let me tell you the different types of neuron first. Okay, so there are three different types of neurons. They are uh, <clears throat> types of neurons. They are sensory neuron, motor neuron, and third one is your association neuron. Okay, there are three types of neurons, namely sensory neurons, motor neurons, and association neurons. Okay, so sensory neuron is the neuron which carries impulses from the receptor organs to the central nervous system. Okay, receptor organs means out here the sense organs like you know eyes, nose, tongue, skin. So these are the receptors. So from there, the messages or the impulses are carried by these sensory neuron, neurons to the central nervous system that is brain and spinal cord. All right, then your motor neurons, another type of neuron is there which is called motor neuron. So these motor neurons carry the impulses or the messages from the central nervous system that is your brain and spinal cord to the effector organs. Effector organs means your hands, your legs, like that, your limbs, okay, four limbs and hind limbs. So these are the your effector organs and the third one is there that is association neuron so association neuron is the neuron that connects the sensory neurons and motor neurons that means your association neurons are those neurons which interconnect the sensory neurons and motor neurons okay these are the three different types of neurons and similarly the nerves are also classified okay there are three kinds of you know nerves like you know sensory nerves that means those nerves which are formed of sensory neurons similarly motor nerves motor nerves means nerves formed of motor neurons and similarly your uh, <clears throat> your mixed nerves are there which are formed of both sensory and motor nerves so these are the types of neurons and types of your nerves okay now let us talk about the brain which is there in your syllabus okay the human brain as i have drawn out here the human brain out here okay the human brain so human brain okay in proportion to the size of the body the human brain is the largest among all other animals all right so it weighs about 1.35 kg 1.35 kg okay and it constitutes two percent of the total weight of the body two percent two percent of the total weight of the body all right and it contains 80 percent water 80 percent water and and 25 percent of the oxygen total oxygen taken into the body is utilized in the brain that means 25 percent of the oxygen taken into the body is you know utilized here in the brain okay that's the basic idea about the brain all right then <clears throat> this brain is uh, protected by a box brain box which is called cranium or skull cranium this is a biological term called cranium which means a brain box inside which your brain is protected all right and this brain uh, is covered by uh, three membranous coverings okay your brain our brain this brain is covered by uh, three uh, membranous coverings called meninges or what meninges okay meninges meninges means the coverings of the brain okay i mean the covering of the brains which contain three layers there 
and these three layers, these three membranes, uh, you know, are named like this. You see also, dura mater. Okay, the outermost layer of the meninges, which covers your brain, is your dura mater. That's the outermost one. Okay, then middle one is your arachnoid. Okay, middle membrane of meninges which protects your or which you know covers your brain is your arachnoid a r a c h n o i d arachnoid and the innermost one okay the innermost one is your pia mater okay innermost one is pia mater so this middle one which is called arachnoid is a, a wave like cushion cushion means something which protects the you know your brain inside so that a wave like cushion is outer which is your arachnoid in the middle layer of this meninges and the innermost one is your pia mater p i a m a t r pia mater okay so this pia mater is you know innermost one which uh, is richly supplied with blood this pia mater is richly supplied with blood okay then the layers of this you know this these three membranes of the meninges you know contains a kind of fluid substance in between them to protect the brain from different kinds of shocks okay is your cerebro spinal cerebro spinal cerebro spinal fluid there is a fluid substance in between the uh, this membranes of this meninges called cerebro spinal fluid which protects the brain from the different kinds of shocks okay sho ck shocks all right then uh, sometimes what happens is that you know this meninges okay this meninges sometimes get infected that means the inflammation of the meninges sometimes take place so this inflammation of the meninges is called meningitis it's called what meningitis meningitis so meningitis is a kind of uh, problem, is a kind of you know health issue due to the inflammation of this meninges. All right, then uh, now let us go about the parts of the brain. Parts of the brain. Parts of the brain. So there are mainly three parts of the brain. Okay, there are mainly three parts of the brain. They are cerebrum. Cerebrum. The largest part of the brain. This okay, this big you know area is the covered by the part called cerebrum. Second one is a cerebellum, okay, which is at the back side here. So that is called a cerebellum, which is a leafy structure there. Cerebellum. Okay, and third one is your down here, just at the base of the brain called medulla oblongata. Called your medulla oblongata. Medulla oblongata. So these are the three main parts of the brain. Besides this, there are some other parts also there which all have their own functions. We'll also talk about them. But here mainly three parts are there, you know which you find there in the brain. So there are cerebrum, cerebellum, and medulla oblongata. Now let's talk about cerebrum first. This, this area, this large area which you find is your cerebrum. So cerebrum has uh, mainly two portions out there. That means your cerebrum is, you know, mainly divided or equally divided into two equal halves. So each half is called your cerebral hemisphere. This is your cerebral hemisphere. Cerebral, cerebral hemisphere. Okay, cerebral hemisphere. That means your cerebrum, which is the largest part of the brain, uh, has been. I mean, has equal has two equal parts there, and is part of this cerebrum is called cerebral hemisphere. Okay, so right in left cerebral hemisphere here you see only one side of the cerebral hemisphere or the you know one side of the cerebrum so actually there are two sides left and side I and mean left and right sides so each of 
the sites of this, you know, cerebrum is called cerebral hemisphere. Okay, so this cerebral hemisphere is highly convoluted with a lot of ridges out here. Okay, a lot of zigzag, you know, confusing things that you see there, which is something like the, the you know, the innermost part of the walnut which you eat. Okay, so it's something like that. So that is your cerebrum out here, which is highly convoluted. All right, highly convoluted with a lot of ridges there. All right, then uh, is cerebral hemisphere is cerebral hemisphere and I told you there are two cerebral hemispheres lay, uh, right and left so is cerebral hemisphere you not know, internally is hollow okay is hollow but its wall its wall you know has two regions its wall the wall of the you know wall of a cerebral cortex has two regions out there the outermost one is cortex okay outermost one is cortex region the innermost one is your medulla okay cortex and medulla so this cortex and medulla these two terms were even discussed there in the other chapter called excretory system where there was kidney where the kidney was being described that time also we have found these two terms cortex and medulla so here also in his case that means in the case of the cerebral hemisphere also we find these two case and these two words that is cortex and medulla i told you that a cerebral hemisphere internally is hollow but its wall has two regions outer region and in you know inner regions the outer one is called cortex the outer one i mean in and the outer one is called cortex and inner one is called medulla okay so this cortex outer one okay the outer part of this cerebral hemisphere you know is formed of the cell body of the neuron okay this cortex region this cortex region of this cerebral hemisphere is formed of the cell body of the neuron cell body means this one which i discussed last time okay so this is a cell body cell body Okay, and this is your edge zone. Okay, so the outer part of this cerebral hemisphere, all right, uh, which is called cortex, is formed of cell body of the neuron, and it is grayish in color. It is grayish in color. So this part is also called gray matter. So it is also called gray matter. What is gray matter? It is there in your syllabus. So gray matter is the part of, you know, that your, uh, your cerebral hemisphere, which is called cortex, formed of cell body and is in gray color, so that it is also called gray matter. Okay, it's also called gray matter. All right, then this gray matter out here makes so many folds okay this gray matter out in the cortex region makes so many folds so many folds so many you know convolutions are there all right so these convolutions you know give the different you know structures out here you see here this your convolutions so many ridges so many convolutions so many groups you see these folds which you see out here okay these folds actually the folds means like that so these kinds of folds you see here in the cerebrum. All right. So these folds are called gyri. See here. So these are called gyri. The folds which you find here in the cerebrum or in the cerebral hemisphere formed of gray matter are called gyri. Okay. The similar form is gyrus. Similarly, there are groups. Okay. Like that. When the folds are made, obviously the groups are also seen. So these groups here you see. Here you see groups. So these groups are called sulci. S U L C I sulci. Okay. S U L C I sulci. Okay. The singular form of sulci is sulcus. Okay. So these are formed of gray matter. So gray matter means the cell body of the neuron you find here in the cortex, which makes all those like gyri and sulci. Okay. Is that? I have told you here with the help of this diagram also. Okay, then uh, if these you know convolutions or the folds are you know many in number, 
if the number of the you know this gyri uh, or sulci or the folds or convolutions are i mean number is more then what happens is that you know the nerve cells or the brain cells brain cells means outer neuron only or the nerve cells also will be large in number that means more the convolutions or the uh, convolutions more the convolutions here the more the number of the brain cell is there so that the you know the person who is having many such folds because of the you know a large number of you know this uh, what do you call your brain cells become very intelligent okay that means if you have got more convolutions there you obviously have more brain cells so if you have got more brain cells means you are more intelligent because this reason is the you know seat for intelligence consciousness and also the will power because your cerebrum is the site is the seat for the you know intelligence consciousness and will power okay so this is and also this is the one which controls all of the voluntary activities of the body also okay so that's the gray matter out here okay gray, gray matter is the one which is formed of the cell body forming the cortex region of the cerebral hemisphere or the cerebrum you can say cerebrum okay then internally which you say is you no know, medulla so medulla of the cerebral hemisphere is formed of exon of the cell body i mean exon of the neuron because this is there in the cortex region making the i mean giving the grayish color to that region so that it is called gray matter and where is the medulla region of this cerebral hemisphere is formed of exon of the neuron and it is white in color so this region is white in color since it is white in color it is also called white matter of the brain all right then here you see uh, as i told you there are two cerebral hemisphere right and left and these two cerebral hemispheres are connected by means of this you know band and seat of fibers s s double e t seat of fibers called corpus callosum you see here this is a corpus callosum it's not uh, labeled here okay this is called corpus callosum c o r p u s corpus callosum all right so this corpus callosum is a seat of fibers which connects these two cerebral hemispheres of the cerebrum okay that i told you cerebrum is uh, equally divided into two cerebral hemispheres and these two cerebral hemispheres you know are connected by means of this corpus callosum okay and this corpus callosum you know transfers the messages or the information from one cerebral hemisphere to other cerebral hemisphere okay so this is the uh, this all about you know this your your cerebrum or cere uh, cerebrum and the main function of the cerebral cerebrum as i've told you is to be to act as the seat for intelligence okay then uh, your your consciousness and will power and as i told you it also controls all the voluntary activities of the body okay now uh, let's talk about cerebellum another part of the brain that is cerebellum uh, which is located just below the largest i mean largest portion of the brain called in you know, the cerebrum just below that there is a leafy <clears throat> like structure there which is very small uh, part of this brain so, so it is also called the small brain all right and this cerebellum also has the cortex region and the medulla okay cortex and medulla cortex which is uh, outermost region of this you see being made up of gray matter and whereas the medulla inside okay inside one or the internally it is called medulla and that medulla you see being formed of uh, you know your white matter okay and internally it looks like a branching tree all right and the function of this cerebellum is to maintain the balance of the body and also to coordinate the muscular activities okay that means the 
impulse for the muscular activities actually is not formed here it is formed here in the cerebrum itself but coordination is done by the cerebellum okay the main function of this one as i've told you is to maintain the balance of the body that's why sometimes you know you see uh, an alcoholic person when he, he takes a lot of alcohol that time that alcohol affects the cerebellum so that the person you know loses the balance so that he goes left and right and he falls that's because of the you know effect out there in the cerebellum all right then uh, the other one is your, your medulla oblongata okay medulla oblongata which is the lowest portion of the uh, brain okay lowermost portion of the brain is your medulla oblongata all right and uh, it is at the base of the brain you can say or just below the skull all right and it continues with the you know your spinal cord that means from here on you see the con your, it continues with the spinal cord down there all right then uh, it is almost uh, like a it, it almost has a triangular shape Okay, triangular shape here. Okay, and the function of this medulla oblongata is to um, control the involuntary activities of the body. Like you know, you see peristaltic movement of the uh, elementary canal. Okay, heart beats. Okay, um, then your uh, breathing. So these are the ones which are actually controlled by this your medulla oblongata which means all the you know your involuntary activities you know are actually controlled by the medulla oblongata okay these are the three main parts of the brain all right beside this we have uh, some other parts also there shown in the diagram like you know thalamus you see okay hypothalamus and also pons manually all right Okay, uh, you, this thalamus, uh, which you see here in this uh, diagram also. Uh, all right, so this thalamus also has, uh, you know, an important role to play here in our life. That is, uh, you know, it supports the motor and language system. Okay, motor, that means movement of the uh, body. Okay, and the language system, you know, is supported by thalamus so that if this thalamus is damaged that means damage uh, to the thalamus can lead to a permanent coma also all right then <clears throat> we have hypothalamus here just below this thalamus another reason is they called hypothalamus so hypothalamus actually <clears throat> you know links the nervous system with the endocrine system okay so i've told you before that uh, i've told you already that you know we have got two systems to control and coordinate all the systems there in the body that is your nervous system and endocrine system so to connect to you know uh, link these two systems your nervous system and the endocrine system is done by the hypothalamus okay and this hypothalamus via this pituitary gland that is so via the pituitary gland this hypothalamus you know links the nervous system to the endocrine system okay similarly another part you can see out here called your pons or it is uh, written as pon baroli okay pons baroli see pons baroli is another uh, reason out here in the brain which you know carries or uh, okay or transfers the nervous messages from the different parts of the brain to the spinal cord to the what spinal cord though your nervous your your brain and the you know spinal cord are the parts of central nervous system but the connection to convey the message from the different parts of the brain uh, to the your spinal cord is done by this Pons barely, which are there in your syllabus. So these are though it's not that you know we have got only three parts of the brain and they are there in the syllabus, which you have to know. But beside that, there are these parts also there, which are shown there in the diagram. As I told you, thalamus, hypothalamus, pons. These are all there in your syllabus. And I've told you 
the functions of each one of them here. Okay, I hope you people have understood all about it and please um, refer to your book as well. Alright, thank you very much.